The controversial electronic transfer levy was passed on Tuesday despite a walkout by the minority caucus in protest against its passage. During proceedings on Thursday, the minority chief whip Mubarak Muntaka took a swipe at the clerk of parliament for failing to record the walkout and also omitting names of some minority members who were present on Tuesday in the vote of proceedings of the house. The most unforgivable error that I call deliberate, not a mistake, is to refuse to record that we walk out. Mr. Speaker, with the greatest of respect, we just want to sound caution to our clerk and his team. It is true that people may have their party affiliations, but what we expect from them is fairness and accurate reporting. This partisan behavior we will not tolerate it. It is deliberate and it was intended for a purpose. And that purpose, Mr. Speaker, unfortunately, has been achieved out there because we go around all the radio stations and TV stations. All they are discussing is the vote and proceedings and lambasting our members unfairly. And Mr. Speaker, it has led to almost a crisis within our caucus. A special one, it was not corrected yesterday because members felt that Leadership has become inert, insensitive to their plight. And now they are facing the wrath of their consensus unjustifiably. When truly they were asked to come to the house, some of them were here long before even we started sitting. And yet this has happened and unfortunately has not been corrected. The Deputy Majority Leader, Alexander Apenyo Marken, described the comments as unfair and called for the submission to be expunged from the records. Mr. Speaker, the clerk cannot speak, has no right of audience, and it's against the rules of natural justice to accuse somebody for the record for the whole world to watch that your clerk is incompetent, your clerk is partisan, when he cannot respond to it. Mr. Speaker, I will not sit on concern. When the same Mubarak advised me not to raise an issue on this floor against a person who cannot have a right to speak. So, Mr. Speaker, that aspect of his submission should be expunged from the records. That aspect of his submission, which deals with accusing the clerk of being partisan, be expunged from the record. As to all other concerns, I share with him those concerns, I agree with him those concerns, and I think they are legitimate, and members who are affected have the right to raise it. It's their right, far right. They should raise it and raise their protest. But on the clerk, we cannot attack the civil servant we've been working with. The Speaker of Parliament directed that the corrections be made and called for an improved way of capturing the presence of legislators in the House. I acknowledge and appreciate the emotional way this thing was presented. And I totally also sympathize with you. But as I stated earlier on, this is a draft. We've given the opportunity. There are other things that have gone under the bridge, including what we call the attendance register. Now, if you look at the attendance register for that day, definitely there are errors. And the senior member, Honorable Cletus Avoka, pointed out one to S. That even when he went to sign, he was told to come and sit. They know his seat. They will come and identify him and for him to sign. It never happened. But sitting here as the speaker, I saw, I recognized, and the Hansard can prove me right that some of the members that have been marked absent were present and in fact participated in the proceedings of the House. So this is a grievous error. Being the Speaker and being the one having the ultimate responsibility, I will take responsibility and apologize sincerely to members for this error. I will plead with you 
that whatever our suspicions, let them remain as suspicions. I want to end up by directing that as we go through the correction of goals and proceedings, these matters be captured properly in the votes and proceedings of the House of today as rectifying the errors that were committed on the votes and proceedings of the 29th of March 2022. As who direct. The Member of Parliament for New Edubiase, Salam Abdul Adams, denied allegations of being compromised to stay away from Parliament during the debates on the e levy. According to him, the error of the Clerk of Parliament has raised concerns among members of his constituency. But in the past 24 hours, my mental health has been exacerbated. You know, I'm distracted because last night, as at 12 a.m., I was receiving messages. My wife was calling from Canada. My family members, friends from the States and UK, everybody wanted to know why I'm being circulated around for something that I did not know. I, did, I, didn't, I didn't do and they don't know how it happened. You know, so, and you know, in my constituency, there are people going around and saying that I took Soleil to stay, to absent myself from, from parliament. And that's, that is highly unfortunate. And I think that whoever made these mistakes has to set up. Speaking to journalists, the ranking member on Roads and Transport Committee of Parliament, Gavin Squamiagbo, just said he would resign if the government was able to provide data on claims of constructing over 10,000 kilometers of roads in the space of five years. By May last year, the minister says there are 4,800 kilometers of project under construction. However, in April, or uh, how do you call it, February, March 2022, the government has gone to co complete 6,000 kilometers out of the 5,000. Does it make sense to you? I'm happy that some of your organizations have uh, uh, fact-checked them. Ignore my chairman totally. He hasn't got any data. In fact, if anybody has got data on completed projects in this country, who do you think will have that data? The road minister. The road minister doesn't have that data. If the government have got any data on 10,800 kilometers of new road, they should provide it. I'll resign as an MP. You listening to me? If government can have data on 10,800 kilometers of new road constructed, I will resign as an MP. Take it from me. But if it is also true that the government did not build 10,800 kilometers of road, the president should resign. After resuming from a three-hour suspension of proceedings, the House commenced a debate on the State of the Nation's address presented by the president on Wednesday. According to Ghana Statistical Service, food inflation average. 8.48 percent from 2013 to 2022 20, January. Mm -hmm. We have in 2022 February, just last month, Ghana recorded the highest food inflation ever in the history of this country, mm -hmm. and that is 17.4 percent. Mm -hmm. Food inflation, don't come you know. You are aware. <laughs> that is your record. <laughs> the highest food inflation ever in the history of this country has been recorded during the time of the Nanabu Danko Akufuadu. There is a relationship between food prices and poverty. Mm -hmm. And this has been established mm -hmm. by World Bank. Mm -hmm. According to World Bank, 44 million people have fallen into poverty mm -hmm. due to rising prices of food mm -hmm. in developing countries. Today, as we speak, there are supermarket fights in Germany over cooking oil. Yeah. Today, as we speak, Germany and Netherlands have announced to their citizens that they must reduce gas used in their homes. As we speak, there are bread shortages in Egypt and Yemen. As we speak, in Nigeria, there are shortages of fuel. They can't even buy, they can't get fuel to buy. So, Mr. Speaker, definitely... Right. The Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagbin, took responsibility of the concerns raised by the minority regarding the omission of names of some of their members in Parliament on Tuesday. He, however, called for an improved way of registering the legislators in the House. Reporting from Parliament, my name is Ni Ayukwe Okaina.
for City News.